Hello, friends, and welcome. I couldn't wait until next week to post the Stepped Up Emergency Cards. This is Kit 13, and we made some Halloween cards on the 15th, uh, but there's also fall sentiments in here. So we have circle sentiments, strip sentiments, and then we also have these larger format sentiments. And I thought I was gonna make some quick and easy autumn cards because I asked if you guys wanted to see that and you were like, yes, let's see that. Um, and then I went overboard. Shocking, surprising, I know. This is 11 by three and a quarter and I'm gonna score at five and a half. We are following the sketch for the most part for this first card. And my matte layer is going to be out of some pattern paper. It's three and a quarter by five and a half. And I love this print. This is from the Cozy Pattern Paper Collection from scrapbook.com. I have the A2 size. There are larger sizes, but because we're cheating to turn this into a mini slim, you can actually use A2 paper to make a mini slim card, which just is awesome. It also means you can use your A2 dies. I have this piece that is three by four inches. This strip is one by three and a quarter, which is smaller than the sketch. So we'll talk about that. And then I have my sentiment that will ultimately be two and a quarter by three and a quarter. We're gonna ink blend because I didn't include a background on this. I'm pointing out on this large blending tool how it's lighter in the middle. That's because these Amazon blending tools are sort of domed in the middle where this all to new one that is admittedly more expensive doesn't do that. So I want to start by saying the all to new blending tools are far superior here. I've had the Amazon ones for a couple years actually, and I didn't like them, even though I gave them a haircut around the outside and tried to even it out. But I was like, let's, Let's break them out again because I firmly believe that a larger blending tool makes the work I'm showing you right now much, much easier. And with the haircut, it, they're not terrible, but the, Am the Amazon ones just cannot compete with the Alta New ones. However, I left all of the blending in. I thought about speeding through this a little bit. Um, you need lots and lots of layers. I like to go for a light or mid-tone ink and just go over it and over it and over it with the largest blending tool I have to try to meet and overlap in the middle and get a great blend. I also wanna show you that you can cut these out with dies instead of your trimmer for a whole different look. These are the stylish ovals. It's the sixth and seventh largest. And then this is the third largest of the essential floral reflections dies. But I'm gonna use my trimmer. So I am just trimming the whole thing so that the tick marks are touching the edge of the paper, just like we did in the first video. And then I will visually connect two of those tick marks. Then I will have one tick mark remaining and I'll just trim around on each side. In the end, it needs to be two and three quarter by three and three quarter. So on that last one, there is no tick mark and you're just gonna trim it to size, okay? I wanna give you lots of options and lots of different ways to think about those large sentiments. You could also print that onto pattern paper or print it onto colored cardstock. If you use a laser printer, you can foil it. I actually foiled one and meant to show it to you, but it <laughs> didn't end up in the video. To turn this into a mini slim card, I'm gonna just hold my card base over my number seven coin envelope and I will use that to gauge my size, right? You could measure it, it's six and a quarter inches tall, but instead that envelope keeps me from having to measure. And I like that. This piece is one inch instead of one and a half because I didn't wanna cover up so much of that pattern paper. In fact, that pattern paper is the entire reason I bought that pack. So if I'm gonna size that brown piece down, I also need to size down my strips. Instead of a quarter inch, these are three sixteenths of an inch because that's the size my die cut. If I had dies that cut an eighth of an inch, I would probably use those instead. I start with the center one so that I know I have the same amount of room on the top and bottom, and I find it a little bit easier to kind of gauge everything from there. Then I'll just flip it over and I will trim off the excess with my scissors. We're only making small adjustments to the sketch, but I will include a new printable and then a longer version of the original printable in case you want all those measurements written down. These are some flowers I was putting together for an entirely different card. And 
I used the die from the centers of those flowers to cut out some dots from matte gold cardstock. All of my embellishments in gold are really, really shiny and they just didn't feel like they fit with this more muted paper. So I cut out a bunch of sizes and I just glued them all over the place. It also makes for really nice flat embellishments and easy mailing. I don't know how to pick a favorite from this video, but this card is definitely in the running. This is the Songbird Fields paper from LDRS Creative. I got it from scrapbook.com. They don't carry it anymore, but it's on clearance at LDRS Creative. So I will link it for you because fall colors are not my jam, but this paper makes them work for me. There's some pink and teal and plum that just makes me like orange in a way I normally don't. Sorry, my orange loving people. It... <laughs> Anyway, uh, all of the colors in this video are based off that paper. This is the Grateful Stamp and Die Combo from scrapbook.com, and we're gonna use a combination of things from it. So I've cut out the G twice, and there's the G and then this little outline, um, and then there's this stamp that says, so grateful for so much. So I've put this into my Misty, and I am gonna heat emboss. I'm using brown because that felt better than like the stark black, like it went more with my autumn colors. I'm gonna stamp this twice and then I will just use some clear embossing powder over the top of it. You wouldn't have to, but this ink takes a little while to dry and I'm impatient. I left the G die cut on there just as a placeholder to make sure I got all of my spacing right. Um, and then I'm gonna pair this with one of our emergency sentiments, but I will absolutely show you where I would have put it if I hadn't stamped this um, and give you some ideas, hopefully along the way to use what you have. So I wanted to mix and match. I've got the G, the big part of the G in teal, which is one of my very favorite colors. I know if you're one of my craft roulette people, um, I really wish there were a team teal because <laughs> uh, that is where my heart is. And then I'm just going around the outside as lightly as possible and leaving just tiny little bee trails of glue and I will lay the outline of the G into that. I'm trying to show you how little glue is there but it's hard to see even when I hold it up. So I'm going to pick the top of the G and kind of get it all lined up there and the rest of it just falls into place. It's super slick. If you have other uh, alpha dyes, especially large alpha dyes, try doing this with dyes that you already have and you could put one behind the other and create a little bit of a shadow layer. I just, gratitude um, is a huge part of fall for me. I don't know why, um, but it just is. And so uh, this stamp and die combo, I absolutely adore. I'm using my trick again to make sure my card is the right size, six and three quarter inches. It will fit in my envelope. You can do that with whatever envelope you have. Okay, and then I'm just wiggling it. There's a little bit of a sheen on that cardstock, so you get more wiggle time than you would on like regular cardstock. Once again, I'm using my one inch by three and a quarter inch strip. Um, this is matte gold cardstock, and then I'm laying those three sixteenth of an inch strips on top of that. I've switched to my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive because it grabs a little faster on slippery things. And if you've seen the new glue press, I think it's My Sweet Petunia, the people who made Misty came out with this glue press. That's the glue it comes with. It's excellent glue. Okay, so I went a little glue crazy. <laughs> I didn't want it all over my scissors. So I am just gonna sort of wipe some of that glue off before I go trying to trim everything down. And then I've got to figure out where to put my sentiment. This came from the strip sentiments and this is that sort of serif, fancy script, not scripty, the one below the scripty font that nobody uses. Right, guys, we're replacing it. Okay, decided. Um, you could certainly put that right where we stamped so grateful for so much, but I'm going to put it down kind of on top of my strips of cardstock and I'm going to lay it down, get it gluey and be like, wait a minute, what if I popped it up? We're going to pop it up. These are one millimeter thin foam squares from Spellbinders and they fit just perfectly behind here. The strip is about a quarter inch and then my matte layer is about three eighths of an inch. So if you took a quarter inch and cut it in half, that's how much I added on from the initial quarter inch. And there's just the tiniest little bit of gold all the way around it. 
And that finishes up this card. I thought about embellishments, but I liked it how it was. This one, we're gonna get real fancy. So I have a piece of matte gold cardstock. I get mine from Michaels, you guys. Most of my specialty cardstock, I'm on a budget. So I get it from Michaels. And this is um, a little yellow for me a lot of times, but perfect for fall. Then I have cut this Geo Squares cover plate from scrapbook.com. This is a newer one um, from some teal cardstock. Obviously it's too wide. We'll trim off the sides, but because we're cheating on our card base, I can use an A2 cover plate on this, which I love. So I'm using some temporary tape once I get it centered in the pattern, right? It is geometric. And so my eye would be bothered if it wasn't centered on there. And then I'm gonna flip it over and just draw a pencil line where the card ends. So I know where to put my glue. I am gonna be leaving all these little loose bits. I'm not covering that whole thing with glue. I don't have time for that. Um, but I will go on all those little side pieces along the top, along the bottom, and then strategically in like three-ish places through the middle. There's a bunch of like strong, long lines that are easily connected. And then I will just use that same tape like a hinge and lay it down in there. I'm gonna set that aside to dry before I go trying to trim off the sides. This is the third from the largest of those essential floral reflections dies and I've cut it twice, once from cream and once from teal. And then these are the autumn leaves dies from scrapbook.com. Okay, so I'm using a ton of <laughs> scrapbook.com products. Here's what happened. I don't know about you, but I keep my Christmas, Halloween, and fall stamps and dies separate from everything else because I don't use them year round. Well, I got them out and I was like, oh my God, I forgot I had this. Oh my God, I forgot I had that. And then, and a lot of them are from scrapbook.com because they're really affordable. And I, I just want a little bananas. I did. Uh, so I, we're admittedly reusing all the things, but that you can recreate these cards using a lot of what you have. Please, please know that. Um, I am just adding these leaves, kind of hanging off the edges all around, and then I will set that aside to dry a little bit. When I put this in my trimmer, I'm being really, really careful. Uh, I definitely want this to be a clean cut and to only have to cut once, but look at how fancy that is, and it wasn't very much work. Once this has dried a little bit, I'm gonna bring in the same die we used to cut it initially, and I'm gonna flip it over and make sure I'm fitting it right inside the die. Obviously, there are leaves hanging over the edge, and I am gonna tape this to the die, and I'm gonna use the die to trim off the edges because they're all curvy and stuff. I could try with my scissors, but some days that is not gonna go well for me. Some days I might be fine, but I <laughs> some days not. Okay, and so I get this really lovely edge and actually there's like an impression around the edge. These teal pieces are the same die that I just cut in half and there's a really clear middle. These don't nest the same way some dies do. If you lay the next largest one down and then put this on top of it, it, I don't know, it, it doesn't quite look as tidy as I would like. It's not a perfect fit. So I am gonna do, this is like a trick I learned back when I first started um, going to Stamp Club with my Stampin' Up dealer. I cut it in half and I let it hang off the two edges. If I made this card again, I might actually cut the card at three inches wide instead of three and a quarter. Um, I'm looking at this here and deciding, you know what, I actually want this to be hanging further off the edge than the envelope allows. We're gonna do a custom envelope. I'm gonna show you how. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna add glue where it's gonna overlap the card. And you'll see there's a fair bit on either side, on the left and the right. You'll have to let me know if you like that. Part of me wants to go back in on the finished card and try to trim the edges, but I know I'd mess it up. And I'm not starting over, so I didn't. Um, but, but you might go three inches wide if you're gonna use the Essential Floral Reflections die. For this card, we're going to use one of the circle sentiments. This one says, blessed to have you as my friend. 
and I'll use my removable adhesive and I will lay that right in the middle. I, I don't know what it is. I love that floral reflection die. I'm going to trip over it at some point. <laughs> I love it with our circle sentiments. Next, we're going to cut down an envelope. This is eight and three quarter by three and a half. So basically a business size envelope with the flap on the end. And I'm making a tick mark half an inch further down from where the card sort of ends, right? Once it's in there and I will trim that off. Okay, so here it is, here's my card. You can see I've got about an extra half inch and now I'm marking like just barely past where the card ends. Okay, and we're gonna do a little envelope surgery. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna slide my little blade in there and cut only up to that mark. We're creating a new flap on the bottom. Then there are lots of ways you could go about this. Probably <laughs> use your trimmer. I'm gonna fold back the flap we want to keep. And I run in my X-Acto knife and a ruler. I could have stuck that in my trimmer. I don't know what I was thinking. It would have been easier to show you that way. I'm rounding the corners. You certainly wouldn't have to. But that is going to fold up over the piece we just cut off and I'm gonna use wet glue. In theory, you could use double-sided tape, but if any of that tape isn't securely stuck down and you stick your card in there, your card's gonna get stuck in the envelope. So this is like, if ever there's a time you're gonna join team wet glue, this is it. And now I have the perfect envelope for my card. Here, oh, I love this one too. I don't, it's got die cutting, you guys, you know me. Um, this is another piece from that cozy pattern paper and I would never have thought, hey girl, how about some brown plaid for a card? But it, I don't know. It spoke to me and I think it really works here and I really think it's because of those plum colors we're about to bring in. I was using a leaf die set earlier from scrapbook.com that is much smaller. These are larger leaves. Um, these are from the Autumn Wonder collection that just came out from Spellbinders. We're gonna use some other pieces from that too. If you were only using the leaves, there's a much older set from Spellbinders that might still be available that I love so much. I will link them both below because those leaves are really similar to these, both in size and in shape. And I'm just arranging them, not on the whole card, like that's not necessary, but just on the bottom because I'm gonna use those stylish ovals on the top and they're gonna cover up pretty much the whole thing. So here, I wanna make sure that my leaves are kind of hanging off the bottom. That to me gives it the look of like another patterned paper on top of the patterned paper. Um, <laughs> do you see this? I put glue on it, picked it up, put glue on it, and then I couldn't remember where I had just picked it up from. Do you do this? I don't know how I even have a brain. Okay, so this is the set. It cuts all of these pieces. And I love those mushrooms. They're so good. Um, I am going to kind of figure out my arrangement because I want to stamp on this too. I love the idea of combining both my stamps that I love and my pre-made sentiments because that makes it mine. This is the Envelope of Wonder sentiments and they're very scripty. And so I think they go well with this serif font. This is font number four on the second page of, of strip sentiments. So I'm setting the whole thing in my Misty um, with, <laughs> there's like a, a gourd, maybe it's a pumpkin, I'm gonna call it a gourd and all of that so that I get my placement right. And then I'm gonna heat emboss in gold. This is Versamark ink, so it's just sticky ink. And then I'm gonna use Brutus Monroe gilded embossing powder. It is, more matte gold, more antique gold, I guess. And it fits in with the matte gold that I've been using on all of these cards. So I will heat set that. And it just, it when you put the powder on, you worry about it because it looks so light, but it darkens when you heat set it. And it's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So off camera, I just trimmed off the leaves from the side of the card, nothing fancy. You've seen me do that before. And then I will add this cream piece onto a piece of matte gold cardstock, again, from Michaels. I went with cream instead of white because I felt like it went better with the colors we were using. My sentiment strip is on white, but I'm okay with it. I'm not, I could have reprinted the whole thing, but I didn't want all of them on cream. <laughs> so I didn't. Um, of note, 
If you don't want to print all of them on colored cardstock, I also have used my alcohol markers to change the color of my strip sentiments, right? Um, so like when I did my ugly sweater cards, those had a set of strip sentiments that came out with it. And I colored all of those with alcohol markers because they were all going to be different colors. I should have just attached that oval <laughs> to the card base, but I was like, what if I mess it up? I don't want to redo the whole card. And then I'm dropping the, it's like the gnome card all over again. Gnome video. I, yeah, it was the whole video. It's just this one little moment. It's going to be fine going to be fine. The glue wiped off. No one will know. Uh, wet glue is my friend here. It lets me wiggle um, and play with things until I'm happy with them. I like this little acorn. There's a big acorn in this set too. None of these pieces in this set are hard to put together. They're like two tops, three die cuts um, worth of, of pieces and they're just awesome. And there's a couple envelope of wonder things. I can't quit using them. Uh, so I used some temporary tape on the front just to kind of give myself a visual of where the card ends. And that helped me to line up my foam tape and make sure it wasn't going to go up too high. And then at this point, we're adding wet glue. So I've got wiggle room and I know that if I lay it down, I get a little bit of float time. So it's like the best of both worlds, right? A little bit of wiggle. And then as soon as you press it down, like it's not moving. And then I'll pick it up and it'd be in the I edited it out, like me pulling it off and putting it back on a couple of times. It was the, this card I filmed after my kids got home. I got everything else done ahead of time. And then this card and the next one, the kids were home. And I tell you what, like half my brain is occupied. So we're going to use a strip sentiment again. The stamp says sending love and hugs. And this says happy fall friend. And I thought those went nicely together. So my plum cardstock is about three eighths of an inch, just slightly wider, an eighth of an inch wider than the strip sentiment. And I'm gonna run it clear across the card where on the sketch, there would have been um, like a one and a half inch strip. And then there would have been three strips on top of that. This is just one strip going across the middle down there. And I love a strip sentiment for this. You could, I could have trimmed this out smaller. I don't know, um, but I, I didn't. I am layering a second piece of that plum cardstock back there just because there's a lot of texture from those leaves. And I wanted to make sure uh, that this wasn't gonna sag if it went through the mail. And then when I go to center this on my card, I'm looking at the wording and where it's falling on in relation to the oval, right? Um, and then I will kind of wiggle and I have to pick it up. And then it was off camera for a while. <laughs> and I'll trim that with my scissors. Uh, and then I trim, but you can't tell. Don't tell anybody. No one knows. I did not trim off part of the card. And that's it. I love that card. And then there's this hedgehog. It is a hedgehog this time, for sure. It says so on the packaging. Here again, we're going to add our three and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock to our card base. But I was like, I would really like to get two pieces of pattern paper um, for this sketch from a single piece of six by six. Like I have this LDRS creative paper that I love that's on clearance. So I'm not gonna be able to get it much longer. I've already ordered two more guys. Um, so I was like, I want two cards from this. So instead I trimmed the pattern paper at three inches instead of three and a quarter. And this is gonna let me stretch my very favorite fall paper ever. And then I'm layering up my ovals. These are the same stylish ovals we've been using and I will use my envelope trick to get everything adhered. And that gives us a really quick card base. That's a little different. Like I just think when you have a sketch like this um, that is a shape you're not ever gonna find in the store, that's the sweet spot. That makes me happy. This is the hedgehog die set from scrapbook.com. This little guy is so stinking cute and it comes with these little pumpkins and there are these really great etched details in them. So I'm just coming in with a little bit of ink. A mid-tone works best. I was trying really hard on the pink to use a light and it <laughs> uh, I should have grabbed a darker ink. Um, but I just want to bring out those etched lines and then I'm going to go over the tops of the pumpkins with a brown alcohol marker just to give them a little extra detail. You could absolutely skip 
all of the coloring and ink blending that I'm doing on these die cuts. I just wanted to see what else I could do with them. Here's the back of the hedgehog and it's got all of these little details pressed into it. You could just cut that from some dark brown cardstock because we have other pieces we're layering on top. But I'm using a domed foam and going over that, if I use like a blending brush, it's gonna get down into those grooves, but the, the foam really doesn't, right? It's not that squishy. And so it keeps those indentations lighter and really creates more depth and dimension. I've added on his little feet, which I would have skipped, skipped except that I got ink on them. And then here's his face. And so again, you could have done that background piece just out of dark cardstock, and then this is craft cardstock that I'm putting on the front. This is his little nose. Um, I use this trick where I pick up some of the glue with the pointy end if I feel like there's too much glue. I didn't do it on the ear and I should have because then my little tiny inner ear was floating on that glue and that's why I had a hard time getting it pressed down right where it went. Uh, I figured out where the eyes go. These are the smallest die cuts. Um, though honestly, they weren't that hard to work with on this particular day. If you didn't wanna do that, you could absolutely just use a pen, right? Um, a lot of times that's what I'll do if, if pieces are that small. Um, then I think I want him kind of in the middle and I'm gonna make a little arrangement of pumpkins down here at the bottom. And then there's this little heart and I can't decide if I want the heart above him or if I want the heart on him. If I was stamping a sentiment, I would have just added that heart onto the hedgehog because I think that's really cute too. You'll have to let me know um, where you would have put it. But then I'm just going to start gluing things down. This card comes together pretty quickly. I love die cutting. If that is not what you love, you could stamp things here. You could use ephemera here, right? Um, you don't have to love die cutting just because that I, I feel like it's really popular right now. I feel like I see a lot of YouTubers who are heavy die cutters, um, but maybe that's just because I follow die cutters because <laughs> that's what I love the most. Um, but something to keep in mind. I'm going to lay this last one on here. I thought about popping it up a little bit because there's a fair bit of texture behind him, but I didn't. Off camera, I trimmed out three more of these strip sentiments um, and added them to that plum cardstock that's three eighths of an inch. And I wasn't sure which ones I would use. There's this hello there pumpkin um, that goes with pumpkins, obviously. And then every fall reminds me of you, which is one of my favorites from this entire kit. Um, and then the blessed to have you as my friend, I just felt like was too long. It didn't fit the width of the card very well. Or I might have swapped that out for the pumpkin one, which is, I, I don't know, maybe a little too cheesy for some people I would give it to. <laughs> but I'm not too cheesy for it. So I went with it. And I'm just going to line those up and lay them on top of each other. Um, and that will finish off my card. I love this. Let's take one last look at all five cards. You guys, we made five cards. This was a long video. Thank you. As always, I would like to know which one is your favorite. If you would like the free printable that has the additional changes to the original sketch, all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel and then down in the bottom of the description box, there'll be a version that is just the new page or one that has the original kit with the new page to make it easy for you. Thank you for spending this time with me and I will see you next time.